Five weeks after the events of Scorpio Rising, Alex is living in San Francisco, slowly recovering from the death of his best friend and caregiver, Jack Starbright, at the hands of terrorists. Hi everyone, SL. <clears throat> so, Alex Ryder is one of my all-time favorite book series. Not only just as a childhood book series that I grew up with, but also just in general. It's just one of my favorite book series. It's about a teenager named Alex Ryder who was raised by his uncle. His parents died when he was a baby, and his uncle took him in, and he raised him, as I just said. I'm repeating myself now. Um, but then his uncle dies, and his nephew finds out that he had never been a banker, but was actually a spy. MI6, the British, British secret intelligence, takes Alex in and forces him to take his uncle's place. Now, I admit that sounds like Spy Kids, you know, that sounds really corny and cheesy, but the thing I always appreciated about the Alex Ryder books is that it's set in reality, or at least as close as reality to, as the author can get. You know, the threats that Alex faces are very formidable and evil, and there are gadgets in the films, but there's nothing, I mean, books, forgive me. There are gadgets in these books, but there's nothing like a underwater car that shoots lasers. No, no, they're more practical, like a Game Boy that can um, purpose as a bug finding device. You know, something that's more within the grasp of our imagination, I guess. Um, or the grasp of reality. I have enjoyed all the Alex Ryder books. It ended a few years ago with book nine, Scorpio Rising, which was a pretty definitive ending, honestly. It had a very good showdown with the main villains. Um, a main character died. Alex was destroyed, and he was going to live with a family for the first time, a real um, whole family. And even though I wasn't necessarily a fan of the ending, like, because it was slightly sad, I, I was glad that we got a legit ending. However, that doesn't mean that I didn't want it to continue. So when I heard that Alex Ryder was going to return, I was very, very excited. And, you know, I bought this as soon as I could get my hands on it. And honestly, I'm a bit disappointed. Granted, this did come out quite a few months ago, so, um, yeah, the hype's probably over, but I thought I'd review it. So, honestly, when I heard there was a new Alex Ryder book coming, I was hoping that Alex would be older. Not that I find it ridiculous that he's a teenager, you know, that's what makes the series engaging, but I want to see Alex Ryder grow up. I want to see what he's going to do later on in life. I want to see what he plans on growing up being. I wanted to see him take control of his life is what I'm saying but instead what we got is it's only a couple of months after Scorpio Rising and he's not happy he's not happy at his home he's not fitting in and that disappointed me honestly I, I thought he was going to have a happy life with the pleasures but but no Anthony Horowitz was like you know what never mind he's not going to be happy with these people that's kind of what this whole book is like. As I said, the last book was really a definitive ending, but then Anthony Horowitz was just like, you know what, let's forget it. Let's just forget that ever happened. This whole book really just serves as a way for Scorpio Rising to not happen. It takes away Alex's trauma. It takes away a horrible thing that happened in Scorpio Rising. Really, the only few things that are different now are that a couple of characters aren't in the book anymore. Other than that, Alex Ryder is back to normal. You know, it's back to the standard Alex Ryder is forced into a mission by the government agency. And even though he doesn't really want to, he's going to. It's back to the way it used to be. It's no different, even though Scorpio Rising was definitive, heart-wrenching, and the end. And um, it kind of disappoints me that this book kind of ruined that and just said, you know what, Alex Wright is going to continue. It, it doesn't matter. That, that book didn't, didn't count. It, we're just kidding. It doesn't feel like a new beginning as much as it feels like a soft break. It's a break. 
and now we're back. Yeah, so disappointing. Not that the book itself is actually bad. I mean, it is Alex Ryder, and it is Anthony Horowitz, one of my all-time favorite authors. So obviously you are going to get a very good read. But as I said, the plot's a bit disappointing. The villains are super boring. There's two of them, and they're the same person. So they're twins, so what does that tell you? And um, as I said, it kind of just spits in the face of the last book and says, we're still going. And I, I know, I've said that enough. Um, so yeah, I'm a bit disappointed that this book didn't live up to expectations and that um, it isn't taking strides to be to um, blaze new paths in its story. But it's Alex Ryder. I, I can't complain that Alex Ryder's back. Alex Ryder is honestly one of the best series of all time. So even though I'm a tad bit disappointed about how the book went down, I can't deny that it's great having him back. So, three out of five. You know, three out of five. Um, yeah. So, in conclusion, um, bit disappointed in how the story is handled and about some of the paths the author chooses to take. But all in all, I'm glad that Alex has returned to us.